And good evening and welcome to this edition of the Paranet Continuum, the home of common sense, no-nonsense paranormal talk radio. Well, tonight we're going to explore a very, very serious uh, conspiracy. Um, the, the question tonight is going to be, could modern advances in cancer research and genetic biotechnology have given rise to new viruses and the current and coming plagues? More frightening, could the AIDS and Ebola epidemic have been planned? Well, we're going to cover a book tonight that is the first in-depth exploration into the origin of the world's most feared and deadly viruses, HIV and Ebola. Now, claims that these emerging viruses naturally evolved and then jumped species from monkey to man seem grossly unfounded in light of the compelling evidence assembled in this extraordinary text. Alternatively, the possibility that these bizarre germs were laboratory creations accidentally or even intentionally transmitted via tainted hepatitis, polio, and smallpox vaccines in the U.S. and Africa, as numerous authorities have alleged, is definitely investigated in this book. Now, during the Cold War in the 1960s and early 1970s, the biological weapons race was a horrifying reality. As we've covered on this program, we've uh, talked about uh, MK Ultra being one of them. Military contractors with technical support from the World Health Organization developed countless immune system ravaging viruses and experimented with antidote vaccines for natural or for national defense and cancer prevent prevention. And uh, we're going to uh, we're going to be talking about that tonight with my guest, uh, who is a uh, medical doc or a doctor. He is. Uh, a Harvard graduate, independent investigator, and internationally known authority in public health education. He is one of America, American health care's most captivating motivational speakers. He has authored ten books, including the critically acclaimed Florida Dental AIDS Tragedy Exposé, Deadly Innocence. He lives with his wife and two daughters on Cape Ann, Massachusetts. And it's a pleasure to welcome to the program tonight Dr. Leonard Horowitz. Good evening, Len. Good evening, Michael. Thank you for being with us on the program tonight. My pleasure and privilege. This book that you've written, Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola, Nature, Accident, or Intentional, is uh, a very, very uh, uh, deep, deep subject uh, and covers a lot of material. We're going to try to get as much of this in uh, on the two hours that we have tonight. Kind of outline for me a thesis of what this book is about. It is an exploration into a 1970 Department of Defense appropriations request for $10 million for a five-year study to develop immune system ravaging microorganisms for germ warfare that back in 1969 when it was written, these were descriptively and functionally identical to what the AIDS virus is and does. And in essence, I spent three years, and the book covers uh, the material, on what I discovered when I began an investigation into that document following the money through a paper trail that led through the scientific literature and the government documents Ultimately, I found the United States government contracts under which numerous AIDS-like and Ebola-like viruses were bioengineered by the Army's sixth top biological weapons contracting firm called Litton Bionetics. And so the book Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola goes into who made these types of viruses, when they made them, how they made them virtually every step of the way, why they made them, and most incredibly, we found, as I mentioned, the documents, the U.S. government documents showing you even how much U.S. taxpayers paid to finance what appears to be uh, genocide today. That's incredibly frightening, uh, very disturbing, I must say, and I'm, I'm sure for you it's been a very disturbing investigation. It's been like a roller coaster ride through the twilight zone. Okay, well, we're going to cover all of that tonight. We're going to find out, uh, you know, different aspects of your investigation. But basically, uh, let's start by asking you, how did you get interested in, invest in, in uh, investigating the origin of AIDS and Ebola? Well, that was because in 1990, I was the chief professional advisor for the largest dental and medical catalog supply company in the world. And because of the case of the Florida dentist, David Acker, who had infected his patients with the AIDS virus, because the dental industry particularly was losing millions of dollars because people were afraid they're going to get AIDS in their dental offices, mm -hmm. the CEO of the company, who didn't like losing money, assigned me to the task of developing educational literature to help allay the public's fear because my background was perfect. I had a Harvard Master's in Public Health and Behavioral Science. I had uh, done a variety of uh, research programs and produced some packages, one particularly called 
overcoming your fear of the dentist. So I knew intimately phobia reduction therapies and how fear was being uh, basically propelled by the media. Mm -hmm. And I had been a dentist for 13 years. And basically I began by in investigating the Centers for Disease Control's official investigation reports. And I found them to be bogus. And then I found them to be, them to be fraudulent. And then after three years, I found that they had literally covered up almost all the incriminating evidence against the Florida dentist, including the fact that he believed that he was dying from a virus that the government had created. And he, as a scientifically trained and military dentist for much of his career, held in his possession that most incriminating document that I spoke of earlier, the 1970 Department of Defense appropriations request for $10 million for a five-year study to develop what uh, is written virtually identical description of what the AIDS virus is and does today. And so I began by, after I spent three years uh, publishing three scientific reports investigating that case, I published my ninth book, which was called Deadly Innocence. It was based on those three scientific reports. The last one I had to go out of the United States to get published, I went to the British Dental Journal because the American Dental Association and the American Medical Association journals refused to publish what I termed with the paper uh, was titled called Murder and Cover-Up, could explain the Florida dental AIDS mystery. And so ultimately, I, the next three years was spent investigating that document. That's how I got started. That's very, a very fascinating story. I, I, am, I, am I understanding correctly that in some ways, because of your work, have you been blacklisted, blackballed, or whatever the word would be? Yes, by the American Dental Association, by the American Academy of General Dentistry, by uh, other medical associations. Um, I have frequent invitations from medical students to bring me in uh, to universities where then faculty are invited, but frequently it's, uh, the sessions are poo-pooed. And uh, I find most of our support for this truth coming from the far right as well as the far left. Mm, very interesting. It is very interesting. And, you know, I, I was introduced to you by a friend of mine, uh, who is with the BBC, uh, Jason Dacey. And uh, Jason told me, now, Jason is very middle of the road and uh, very critical in his thinking. And after reading your book and uh, discussing it with you, um, he came away a believer. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm taking a look at this as well from the standpoint that, there, that your book is packed with... Uh, factual documents. That's right. And uh, we're going to get into that. Now, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll start delving into these documents and your investigation. We'll find out also, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure everyone knows what AIDS is, but um, I, I kind of like to know what Ebola is as well. I, we hear that uh, that word and strikes a, a chord of terror in some people. So sure. We'll find out what that is, too, as well. Our number tonight is 1-800-836-2009, one 836 2009 Again, my guest is Dr. Leonard Horowitz. We're talking about his book, Emerging Viruses, AIDS and Ebola, Nature, Accident, or Intentional. I think the rest of the program is going to shock you, so stay tuned for this. I'm Michael Corbin. You're listening to the Paranet Continuum. We'll be right back. One eight hundred eight three six two zero zero nine. One eight hundred eight three six two zero zero nine. We'll be opening the phone lines here very shortly. I want to get uh, a little bit more ground covered with Dr. Leonard Horowitz on his book, Emerging Viruses, AIDS and Ebola: Nature, Accident, or Intentional. And uh, welcome back to the program, Len. Thank you, Michael. Before we get into uh, getting a primer on viruses and how they work, I want to I want to hit or touch upon what is Ebola. Ebola is an ideal biological weapon. It kills. Nine out of ten people within three weeks of infection, it has what's called proteolytic enzymes. It's uh, enzymes that destroy the protein in the body, and so it makes your internal organs and your blood vessels dissolve. Jeez. It's the mush, so you begin to bleed out of every orifice of your body. Oh. And uh, that's ultimately how nine out of ten die. Now, where do we see this uh, virus proliferating right now in the world? Well, there's... Small outbreaks happening uh, fairly regularly, um, and I'm, I suspect them. I don't have a lot of evidence, not, not clearly not the evidence that we have in the book Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola regarding the initial outbreaks of both Ebola as well as AIDS. But uh, I don't trust the government. I have obvious, clear reasons why I don't any longer. So today's outbreaks are questionable as uh, are clearly uh, 
the earliest outbreaks of Ebola, that is Ebola Sudan, Ebola Zaire, and even, even Ebola Kikwit uh, a couple springs ago, uh, spring 95 actually, that is, uh, the government is highly incriminated mm. in releasing these microorganisms. Now let's, let's talk a little bit before we get into the real meat of this. What can you tell us uh, in, in layman's terms and in very brief uh, synopsis, uh, what is a virus and how did you come about to suspect that the virus that is responsible for AIDS and Ebola are actually man-made viruses? Well, a virus is a, a DNA or an RNA fragment, uh, sometimes surrounded by a, a coat, a protein coat.